welcome to part 7 of the uh, USS Voyager build. As you know, we're just waiting on the ball bearings to come in so I can complete the uh, last bit of detail on the uh, engineering hull. So whilst I'm waiting for those to come in, I thought there was no time like the present to actually start working on the back end of the ship. Um, I'm going to sort of be working on all of these parts really pretty much well at the same time. Um, with the nacelles, um, you can see that Ravel there, um, shame on them, I've left a huge great big chunk of um, flash in there. But that's not a problem, that can just sort of uh, come off quite easily. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do the lighting on this one yet because we've got a limited amount of room inside there for um, the light. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to be using one strip of LED tape to go in there or whether I'm going to use uh, a strip of LED tape for the uh, chiller grill and then get a red bulb in there for the um, for the bizarre scoops. I'm not quite sure yet how I'm going to do that side of it. There's not much uh, modifications that need to be done to this really. I mean all we need to do is uh, drill a hole on each one uh, for the navigation lights and then I'm not sure whether you're going to see that at all um, but there is a very thin line that goes around there uh, on these nacelles that will need to be removed and um, better te uh, sorry better detailing put on there because uh, that's just a little bit too uh, thin really well actually it's anorexic um, the details here I might need to rescribe the lines on those once they're together I'm not really sure yet uh, but there's not much that does need to go to the uh, sorry there's not much that does need to happen to these so I don't think it's going to take too long to actually get these parts together um, so obviously we got the two of those then we got the nacelle pylons uh, with the built-in um, impulse engines so with these, um, we do need to remove all of the uh, plastic on that side uh, for the impulse uh, intake. And then on this side, on every single one of them, we need to drill out the um, interior of those grills to get those to light up as well. <laughs> and incidentally, these are the areas... Um, where I had my uh, big accident um, so I'm going to be extra careful with those and most probably wear chainmail gloves so it doesn't happen again um, one of the other things that we need to do is just slightly um, sand these down a bit to get that detail sort of slightly thinner um, we also need to try and um, put a chamfer on the end of those as well but apart from the uh, the painting on those, that's about it really. Um, we also need to, uh, for the rod that goes through these, that acts as the hinges, we're going to need to drill a hole straight through the centre of those to actually run the wires through. On these, we should be okay with just one um, SMD in there. We might need to, I'm not sure yet, I just need to double check. We might need one point in that way and then another one point in the other way. Um, but I'll just double check that and, and see what happens. I think we're going to need to remove some of these uh, injection needle marks as well just to uh, make sure that we've got clearance with the um, with the parts themselves and also uh, all the wires and stuff that go in there. So that's those bits and this is the back end. Um, there's not much really that needs to go on with this. The only things that we do need to do is remove uh, that detail there, that detail, um, those two details as well. Uh, we've got the uh, transporter array emitters that take those places. The other thing that we need to do, if I can chop this off, it'll make it a little bit easier. The other thing that we need to do is uh, remove this part here, because we do have the photo etch window that does go there so we need to do that. We're also going to need to get some um, LED strip light in there as well for the rear windows of the um, the hull as well. We've got the shuttle bay that goes in there. I'm not going to 
I have the shuttle bay open, but I will put it in there just to help it act as a little bit of structural uh, rigidity around the back end. Um, and we've also got the um, port and starboard navigation lights that need to go on this, as well as the uh, anti-collision light as well. Uh, one of the things I will need to do is uh, get the decal out to mark exactly where the anti-collision light goes on this. And then on the bottom section, all we need to do on this again is just get the um, uh, the navigation lights in and also the anti-collision light. And that's about it really. Um, we're more than likely need to get a bulb in at some at some point, not sure quite where, most probably on this section actually. I think there might be a little bit more room on this section. But we need to get a bulb in um, at some point for uh, the rear window as well, so we've got a, a light source for that too. So that about covers that. I know that sounds quite simple, but um, these parts here are the bits that are going to take the time to do, because um, you, you can't sort of like rush in where angels fear to tread on those. You just need to be um, fairly gentle with those. So I'm going to start with the uh, warp nacelles, and then I'm going to work my way onto those, um, and then I'll work my way onto those. And then once that's done, um, I need to then just sort of get everything built up. Um, and then it'll be ready for its first layer of primer. Hopefully, keep fingers crossed. So as soon as I've made some more progress on these, I will come back to you. Okay, I've made a little bit of progress uh, so far on the kit. We've got, uh, on all of the inside surfaces uh, of all the parts I'm working on, we've got two coats of uh, matte black followed by two coats of matte white. Uh, and that should hopefully uh, be enough to help block the light and be bounce it about. So the only things that we need to do on the pylons is for the impulse engines is just remove the plastic from inside of there and also from inside of those parts there. Um, I also need to uh, sand these bits down uh, this kind of U-shaped bit, that needs to be sanded down a little bit to make it a little bit thinner. I also need to add a little bit of plasti strut, uh, circular plasti strut, uh, at the back end there, uh, that's level with the surface. And I also need to try and chamfer the end, uh, ends of those down a little bit too. So hopefully, um, that won't be too bad. One of the other things I also need to try and do with this is that I've found that the parts don't really line up properly at this end and I've got a funny feeling it's the locating pin um, at this end that's causing it. So I'll have a little look at that and have a little play and see if I can get that to uh, to fit a bit better. Um, I'd rather try and get it to fit as well as I possibly can before I start sanding it down because I don't want to end up sanding massive chunks of it off. Um, on this, I've got the uh, navigation lights in and the uh, anti-collision lights uh, on both sides. I've taken off one of the raised details for the um, transport or array admitters. I just need to do that one there and those two on the other side. Uh, I still need to take out the window on that side. One of the things I have been looking at on here is the details uh, on that side. Um, you're actually meant to, on this bit here, you're meant to have two small uh, recessed circles uh, and thin lines as well. So I might see if I can replicate that. What I'm gonna do before I uh, commit to that is um, see if I can replicate that uh, with a plasti strut first. And then if I can, um, I'll do both of, both sides and then I'll remove those details and then put the uh, the new detail on there once these two bits are permanently glued together. Um, it's also a good cheap because it helped hide the seam as well, which is great. So uh, that would mean a little bit less puttying by about mm, two centimetres. Um, but a small victory is still a victory. Um, <laughs> so those bits are done. The... Uh, Warp nacelles, they've had the detail added to them uh, that's previously been missing. 
Uh, so that helps to bring the back end into a little bit more focus. Uh, and I've also got the uh, navigation uh, light holes drilled as well on both sides. So that's those done. So these, um, the, the warp nacelles actually, are virtually ready, to be quite honest. Um, I need to get these two together. I need to get the parts together, really, to get in there um, and get the detail... Uh, Rescribed on those. I've had to sand down some flash on those parts. Um, so I just need to uh, put those together to then rescribe the lines again before I start painting. So hopefully that should look pretty good once that's done. Uh, but that's about it for the moment. I'm just going to carry on and get a few more bits and pieces done. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's taken a while actually to get to that stage. Uh, especially with the uh, nav lights on this side because it does take a little while to try and get those to uh, line up properly um, so I'm going to carry on, get some more work done uh, and as soon as I've got some more work done I will come back to you made some more progress on the model we've got the rear uh, transport uh, transporter array admitters in place and also on the top We've also got the uh, photo etching as well for the uh, rear windows there. Just need to get the glass in. One thing I have noticed is that the um, anti-collision beacon is quite close to those windows, but that will be all right as we will be using um, some light blocking on those, so hopefully you won't actually see anything at all from those windows. Um, we just then need to get a... Um, a small SMD in there as well just to help light up those rear windows so that'll be pretty good um, I'm still working on uh, these bits here as well um, if I do do it it's not going to be until such time that the actual the whole kit is together or this section of the kit is together should I say um, I've also been working on the uh, impulse and impulse engines um, I'm not sure whether you're going to see that too well, but we have got uh, the plastic removed from those. Um, we've also got the plastic uh, removed from those as well. One of the things I have noticed actually with these, as I've been building the kit, and I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see it too well in this on this, but there is uh, a step. Uh, on the, on these parts uh, which would involve a lot of sanding and it also means that the actual grills there aren't aligned properly as well now I've been looking at this and on this one I've actually managed to recorrect it without actually doing too, uh, too much work at all um, I mean as you can see there this is uh, a little bit loose um, and it does move about a bit but all I did on this one uh, was uh, just sand I just, sa uh, just sanded the uh, the very top edge off of the pins on both sides uh, and that actually gave it enough wiggle room to actually get the part in line so that means that <coughs> the actual grills now uh, when this uh, when I can get this part back together again the actual grills on this part now do actually meet up and line up properly which is fantastic uh, there's still some sanding that needs to be done and there's some seams there that still need to be gotten rid of but that's nowhere near as bad as it was before so that's absolutely fantastic I'm happy with that one of the other things I have done with this kit as well rather than um, actually going in the um, the uh, the grills from this side with a um, a hobby drill um, which is a bit of a pain in the backside if I'm to be honest um, but that's where I had the accident before so rather than actually doing that I actually got my um, proper hobby drill out and basically sh um, cut down the inside there I just got my uh, chamfer bit out really um, and just took all the plastic off until such time that uh, it just looked as though we had a, a bit of flash building up there and then it was just a simple case of going in 
and uh, removing the uh, the thin bits of plastic with a with a knife, and the whole process took about 30 minutes. <clears throat> I think it was about 30 minutes compared to last time uh, when I did it. It took me about two and a half three hours to do. So. Um, that was well worth doing. The only thing I would suggest is that you be very very careful with this is if I get the torch you can actually see that by the time you finish um, you're gonna have some very thin areas there so you just need to be very careful about what you're doing otherwise you, you will start to pierce the, um, the plastic there. Um, but as long as you're careful, you end up with the same results, and those uh, light leaks will actually disappear um, once the primer's on. Uh, because we're not actually having an, uh, an intense light in there, we're only having a, a, a single red um, light source, uh, that should, hopefully, keep fingers crossed, be okay, it shouldn't interfere too much. So I think we should, get a, uh, I think we should be able to get away with that. So the only things I've got left to do really on these parts is just try and sand these down a bit and put a little plastic, a little bit of round um, plastic strut uh, in there just to help uh, tidy that up a bit and then try and chamfer the edges down. And that'll be those done. And I just need to get the glass in the rear window for that. Um, and then they'll be done and I'll be able to start moving on to uh, trying to get these uh, these sections uh, built together and getting the electrics in and the, uh, and the lighting. Uh, which is a part I'm actually looking forward to because once I start that, that will um, signal an end really to uh, to the modification stage. Um, so that's about it for the moment. I will come back to you again as soon as I made some more progress on this. Okay, the good news is uh, we've now actually got the uh, glass uh, in the uh, the back windows. Um, that's actually been a bit of a pain in the bum to fit. I would actually say, to be quite honest, of all the work that I've done to this ship so far, I think that is the bit that's given me the most difficulty. Because uh, every time I tried to put that in and get the glass in with it, it wouldn't fit, and then I'd um, sort of sand it down to size again, and then I'd test fit it a couple of times, and then go glue it back in, and it wouldn't fit for some strange reason. You know, it's just giving me a complete nightmare. And then when I did get the uh, the photo wedge to fit and I tried to put the glass in, the photo wedge would come back out again and it's just been like, you know, uh, one of those little jobs where you're um, sort of chasing your tail around for ages and ages and ages and, and starting to get a little bit mad with it all. But um, <laughs> finally, through uh, sheer persistence, I managed to um, get that fitted. So that's all sorted now. All I need to do is just get the little bits of masking tape in there to cover the windows uh, for the painting. Uh, so that's about it there. Um, so I'm just going to continue on and get a few of the other bits and pieces done that I need to. Once that's done, I will come back to you. Right, so we've got the last uh, few bits of detail done. The last two bits of photo etch have gone in. Uh, and that's for the uh, the impulse engine. We've got the little uh, lattice work bit of. Uh, photo etching. I'm not sure whether that's actually going to be seen properly because it's quite small. Uh, but that's in there. We've also put the strip of uh, round styrene uh, in there as well. These bits have been um, sanded down just a little bit as well as I said I would do. Uh, I didn't take too much off of those, only about a quarter of a mil. And I've also put a chamfered edge on the ends there. Um, Again, I'm not sure whether you can actually see those really, to be quite honest, but it is there. I think that might stand out a little bit more once um, the uh, the model's been painted. Uh, so that's both of these done. Uh, the only bit that's left to do is uh, these bits at the end. Now, I'm not going to bother doing these until such time that these uh, this part is together properly because I don't really fancy a seam running down there when I can just plonk the part on. So I'll get rid of those uh, and replace them once this part's built. Still not sure whether I'm going to do it like as it should be on the studio model. I'm not sure at the moment whether I can actually get that level of detail on such a small part. Um, but if I can't do that, then what I'll do is I'll just remove this anyway and put the same kind of detail that's on there now but just make it a lot sharper than what it is. It just helps sort of bring the model alive a little bit more. 
So the next stage for me now, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, is to start um, doing all the necessary modifications to uh, these parts to get the lighting in. So I'm just going to need to start drilling holes um, in this back part and in the impulse engines to uh, help run the wires through and uh, get the lights installed. I also need to do the, um, the clear parts for uh, the uh, chiller grills and also the uh, the Passat uh, scoops as well at the front. And once that's done um, and these parts are together I'll then be able to go in and actually um, rescribe uh, the details on the very edges there to help bring that back out again as well. So that might take a little while to get that done. Um, so I'll make a start on this and I'll get back to you um, as soon as I make some progress on that. <laughs> 